So it says, Suppose you have some mass of wooden crate resting on wooden floor. Okay, uh, let me just uh, start sketching it. I have some floor and I have some crate sitting on it. Uh, we do coefficient of static friction. Oh, um, 0 0.55. So this is my coefficient of static friction between these wood surfaces. Okay. What? Maximum force can you exert horizontally on the crate without moving it? Okay, um, so I guess I'm applying some kind of um, external force and it's asking for what is the max that you can apply before it starts sliding. Okay, uh, let me start out with the free body diagram. We introduced this uh, approach as a standard strategy because it's the same set of steps that you should be using for really regardless of whatever question we ask you. So step number one is draw free body diagram. So let me do that. Um, I have drawing the free body diagram of the crate. I like to represent my object very simply, single dot. And my goal now is to draw all the forces acting on this crate. And I like to start minimally as with as few forces as possible just the forces that i know have to be there i know there must be some applied force because that's the exact situation that the question is asking about and then i'm thinking through okay what other forces should be here um so i I think with this question, you can uh, go different ways. So, so if you are thinking friction, <laughs> then for once, uh, for this question, you are right. And partly because the question specifically mentions coefficient of friction. So you should be accounting for it. Okay, so if there's a friction, then must be opposing this force. And in fact, it says a static friction. So this uh, friction force uh, should be exactly balancing out the applied force. Um, now, if you are ending your free body diagram here, you will find that um, you don't have enough information to answer this question. And this is where you have to keep thinking, did I include all the forces? And in fact, I didn't because I normally start out with this force. I usually start out with the gravity, weight. I mean, if the thing is on Earth, there's gravity on it. <laughs> so I forgot about that. That's what you need. And once you identify gravity, that forces you to acknowledge that there is one other force. Because uh, the question you are asking always is, what is my direction of acceleration? And in this case, your acceleration by the static condition is zero. So your forces should add up to zero. If you have this downward force of gravity and no upward force, that doesn't work. So there must be an upward force and you have an upward force, upward normal force, support force coming from the wooden floor. And um, so identifying all these four forces correctly, it takes care and uh, time. It takes practice. So I strongly encourage you to uh, spend that necessary time and care so that, um, so that uh, you you get this right 100 times out of 100 because uh, if if you miss this step then it doesn't really matter how well you do the re remainder of the steps because if you somehow miss the force or if you misidentified some force then you're kind of done for the rest of the question so okay we drew our free body diagram and second is the define coordinate axis and for question like this, it's kind of simple, so let me just do it simply. I think uh, all the forces and everything, it's telling me that I just want to define regular straight axis. So let me go with that. No reason to make it complicated. Um, the third is decompose the forces into components. And here, um, there's nothing to decompose the way the directions work out. Everything is either along the x direction or along the y direction. So. Nothing to do for step number three. And it's in step number four, where you write down Newton's second law equation. Net force is equal to mass times acceleration. 
And I drew these arrows as a reminder that uh, we have to account for each dimension separately. So when I write down my Newton's second law equation here, I have my net force in the x direction. That's going to be the applied force minus the friction force. They add up to zero because the acceleration is zero. And I have a second equation that accounts for the forces in the y direction. Net force in the y direction is equal to uh, normal force minus the force of gravity. They also add up to zero because the thing is an accelerating vertically. So I have one, two equations. And before you do a bunch of math, um, you should you should count your uh, unknowns. Uh, you should have exactly the same number of unknowns as your equations. I guess if you have less, uh, it might not be a problem, but you also could have overdefined the system, which isn't what you want either. Um, if you have more unknowns than equations, then you definitely need more information. So you are not done then. So let me just count my unknowns. My applied force is unknown. That's what we are trying to calculate here. Friction force. Uh, I don't think I'm given that. I'm given the coefficient, but not the force itself. So this is an unknown. Mass is known, but huh, do I need mass? <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But uh, mass is known, so I don't worry. Oh, normal force. I don't think I know that. Gravity, I do know it. So let me just uh, replace it with mg so that I don't unnecessarily complicate my equation. Okay, oh, so I do need the mass, all right. Okay, so I have three unknowns and two equations, and that's a problem. And I think looking at equation two, you can say, okay, I can figure out the normal force. So normal force is not a problem. And uh, so thinking through this will help you um, spot uh, where you need the extra additional information. And what you are hopefully seeing is that it's in this equation that we have too many unknowns and not enough equations. We do have coefficient of friction force that we haven't used. So um, hopefully you figure out, oh, I need more information about friction. And if you go back to your textbook and take a look, there's a formula for friction. You have a formula for uh, kinetic friction, which says it's a, uh, a coefficient times the normal force, and you have a, uh, and you have the static friction force, which uh, it your textbook if you read it carefully it doesn't say equal, it says less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. So. So yeah, um, here it's a static friction. So you can't use the version with the equality. That's not what applies. So if I have inequality, how is that useful? I mean, couldn't it be just zero from all the way up to this maximum value? This is where reading the question helps because it is asking you what maximum force can you exert horizontally. So question is asking you, so question is implicitly guiding you here. So this is the maximum that friction force there can be to oppose the applied force. And we are looking for maximum applied force that can be opposed by friction force. So, hey, so we can just uh, use the equality portion here. And we do that, we get our third equation that will help us solve this uh, system of equations. And this is where I do want to caution you uh, because so often we ask for a situation like this, maximum, some kind of extreme situation, that so often you are justified in using the equality portion of this inequality that people get into this habit of always using the equality and, um, and you shouldn't. <laughs> I have some examples of trick questions that I've asked in the past where if people assume that from the get-go, then uh, and it's designed to get them to give the wrong answer. So look for always language like this, which is specified, um, are you at some extreme end of the range you can be? That's a check you always need to do because, um, so for example, if my applied force is zero, 
then my static friction force should be zero. And um, so if the question simply ha had asked, uh, what is the static friction force, then you should ask the follow question of, am I applying any force? Because if I'm not applying any force, then static friction force could be zero. So I need, want you to give that caution. So with a note of caution, the rest of the steps are easy, um, or it's not as tricky. You have this, so I need a normal force in order to calculate my maximum friction force. So I'm going to get normal force from here, solving this for n. I get n is equal to mg. So putting that in here, I get my maximum static friction force is equal to mu s given up here times normal force mg somehow in this case. So with this friction force at hand, I can plug that into here and solving for the, or I guess apply the force is equal to the uh, maximum static friction force you can get. So the expression here should be, uh, it should be mu sub s, the given coefficient of static friction times mg. You know m and you know g as 9.8 meter per second squared. You just have to plug in those numbers. And for part B, we are changing this situation. And in fact, if you've been organizing your work, you can um, uh, you can reuse a lot of what you have so far. So um, it says, if you continue to exert this force, okay, so I can, whatever force I calculated here, I can use this as my apply the force. Once the crate starts to slip, uh, what will its acceleration then be? Oh, yeah. So this is quite common thing materially, which is the coefficient of kinetic friction is less than coefficient of static friction. So even though when it's just the beginning to slip, it's the maximum force that you would uh, um, oppose. If uh, something, I don't know, taps the crate and it begins to move, then the, um, uh, then actually there's um, this force is enough to start accelerating it because the amount of kinetic friction force, which uh, we will now use, amount of kinetic friction force will be less because this coefficient is less. And so I'm reviewing my work here to replace some of the, so a lot of the situation remains the same. My applied force is the same. Okay, my acceleration is no longer zero, but it's going to be in the direction of applied force. Um, and the what I guess I can leave the expression for friction force. Still friction force, just kinetic friction. So my free body diagram is good. And the way things work out, my coordinate axes are still good. And there are still no forces to decompose. Good. And my Newton's second law equations, let's see here. Oh, um, so I need to modify it's gonna be mass times acceleration. Now it's accelerating, it's not necessarily zero. And for the expression for this friction force, we will say we are not using um, our previous expression, but rather we'll be using our expression for the kinetic friction. And it'll look quite similar because previously we are calculating for maximum. Um, so the, the form up turns out to be quite similar. That's another source of confusion for people, by the way, because you get into this habit of using this formula for kinetic and then you keep doing the first that again. Watch out. Um, kinetic friction is easier because there's a definite formula. You don't have to worry about a bunch of what ifs. So I have that. The second equation is still valid. Nothing's changed. And um, I guess technically my third equation now is this one. Uh, that gives me my friction force. So when you look at this here, you will see that, um, so we are still eliminating normal force. So this is fine. Um, so we are still calculating the magnitude of friction force from the normal force, so that's fine. My friction force is the new coefficient of friction that's given times the normal force, mg. And ah, uh, in, instead of solving for applied force, now I'm solving for acceleration from the place where I know the applied force and the friction. So my acceleration is gonna be 
my difference between my applied force minus the friction force divided by the mass of the crate. So plug the numbers in, that should give you the correct numerical value for this. So that's it. Uh, question wise, it's not so difficult. It's a simple geometry. Um, and <laughs> the okay, most uh, difficult or tricky thing here is that the kind of thing that a lot of people would uh, naturally do, um, it leads to people building bad habits. So I want you to just pay attention to that. The expression for static friction force, it's telling you the maximum possible static friction force. And there may be questions in the future that don't require you to use the maximum possible static friction force.